Um, now, we're going to switch to um, some uh, quick-fire responses, and we're going to start, really, with um, Declan MacDonald, who's uh, from Caledonian Maritime Assets Limited. He's, uh, he's replacing Kevin, the chief executive, who unfortunately can't make it with us today, but we, he's going to have, give us a quick look. Can I see Declan? Yes, there he is. That's helpful. Um, uh, he's going to give us a quick look at what Caledonian are doing and um, where they're headed and how they're fitting in with the overall plan. Declan, good to see you. Thank you very much and welcome everybody. So my name is Declan McDonald. I'm a technical superintendent with CMAL or Caledonian Maritime Assets Limited. Unfortunately, Kevin couldn't be here for personal reasons, so I'm stepping in today. But uh, if anyone was wanting to speak to him today or had any questions, please come and speak to me at the end and I'll try my best to answer them or put you in contact with Kevin. So just a bit of background about CMO as an organization. We are based in Port Glasgow with around 50 employees. We are owned by the Scottish government and currently have 37 vessels operating around Scotland. Uh, on the map, you can see that's broken down into two contracts. That's the Chiffs contract on the left. That's to the Western Isles of Scotland. That's the Clyde and Heverdean Ferry Services contract. At the moment, that's currently with Caledonia McBrain or Calmac Ferries. The NIFS contract is the Northern Isles Ferry Services contract. Uh, currently of Circle, Northlink, and that goes to Orkney and Shetland. We've also got 26 port facilities, which consists of ports, harbours, slipways, terminal buildings. So we've got quite a lot of um, assets within our brief. And as you can see, a real number of diverse geographical locations and a number of varying requirements. And with that also comes a large range of stakeholders and communities which we engage and consult with. And just a breakdown of how CMO operates as an organisation. We have the Vessels team, which uh, I'm part of. We've got the Ports and Infrastructure uh, team with the civil engineers, the Finance and Procurement and the corporate team. So the CalMac vessels, the CHIFS contract, that is split into three different fleets, the small, the intermediate and major fleets, the small being what's associated with our law class programme. So vessels roughly 30 to 40 metres in length, and then the intermediate, the Argyll, the Butte and the Karushk. So these are all Euro C uh, slash categorised water type vessels, so not as stringent as our major vessels on the right hand side, which are Euro B vessels and th the bigger vessels that we have within the fleet. We've also got five vessels operating for Northlink at the moment, uh, three Ropax and two freight vessels. So I've got a bit more detail on some of these coming up, so I won't spend too much time here, but at the moment we have the Glen Sanex and 802 dual fuel LNG project ongoing at Ferguson's in the, the build stage. We've got the new vessels for Isla and also two new vessels for the Little Mint route, which was formerly the Sky Triangle Uig Tarbot Lochmadi route. We've got the small vessel replacement program currently in the concept design phase. We have the passenger vessels for Gurick, Dunoon and Kilcreggan, again, concept design phase. A new vessel project for the Lord of the Isles replacement, again, just started that one. And uh, later on this year, we'll have a new vessel concept design for replacing the Isle of Mull on the Oban Craig near route. And just obviously, while we're looking at these projects as a whole, these vessels will be around for the next 25 to 30 years, so we do need to look at decarbonisation right now. Two other projects was the Northlink Rural Freight Replacement that is in the concept design phase, uh, drawing towards a close, and the High Seas Free Project, which has now closed, and I'll speak to you a bit more on that later. So in terms of decarbonising our fleet at the moment, as mentioned, we have the dual fuel LNG vessels currently under construction. That's the liquefied natural gas, and we're hoping to save approximately 20% in emissions with those. We have the four vessels uh, being built for Isla and this, the Little Mint route, which are diesel electric hybrid battery vessels. And at the point in time, uh, during concept design, like fully electric hydrogen, methanol and ammonia weren't quite there for these major vessels. But that's absolutely something that we are looking at for new vessel projects coming up. In terms of the small and intermediate fleet, we had the world's first diesel electric hybrid battery rover vessel. Uh, they're all approaching around 10 years old now and just going through their first battery replacement program. The SVRP small vessel replacement program, we're looking at electrifying seven of those, potentially up to 10. And as mentioned, hydrogen as well, we do have an approved hydrogen design ready to go. So a bit of a summary on the Isla and Little Minch vessels. 
the first of which will be delivered in October 2024. These are being built at Chemry Shipyard out in Turkey. They were uh, designed by the value at the concept design phase and in LMG Marin at the detailed design phase. And hopefully it will be in sequence of four months delivery between each. So by the end of October 2025, we should have four new major vessels within our fleet. In terms of decarbonizing the route as much as we can, the vessels are hybrid diesel electric propulsion with approximately 1.2 megawatt hours of batteries, which is an NMC type chemistry. The batteries will be used for peak shaving, so when the engines aren't operating at their peak efficiency, the batteries will then step in. We'll also use it uh, manoeuvring and when in port, so we reduce our noise and air pollution in the ports. We're hoping that uh, with the really ultra efficient hull form that we've gone with, we're going to, in combination with the batteries, save approximately 30% on fuel consumption and therefore 30% with the emissions as well. Uh, you can kind of just see to the right hand side of the image uh, up there just the flare that's on this vessel so it's got a really low block coefficient uh, far better in comparison with the previous vessel and all in this will hopefully reduce our emissions substantially all while uh, achieving a 40 percent increase in the carrying capacity of the vessels the mgo the marine gas oil fuel that we will use is low sulfur mgo so low in SOx, but also we will have scrs selective, selective catalytic reduction which will hopefully reduce our NOx emissions as well. We've gone with a DC grid on this one. Again, just looking towards the future, it will make it easier if we want to start integrating things like fuel cells or additional battery packs. These vessels will be using Voice e, uh, EVSP units, so it's like vertically mounted uh, blades in the water. And at night time, we will use shore power uh, for the hotel load and also to charge the batteries. On the small vessel replacement program, SVRP, this is looking at 10 vessels, but we've had to split this out into two different phases. The goal for the first phase is to provide up to seven standardized, modern, state-of-the-art ferries with all electric zero emission co uh, concept. The phase two has been split apart primarily because some of the vessels that we're looking at will pose more of a challenge to fully electrify. Uh, Bernary Leverborough up in Harris being one of them, which is a very shallow route over the course of eight miles in the journey, it makes something like 26 course maneuvers. And to make matters worse, the route has been recategorized to a higher standard as well. So we're a lot more constrained on that route with what we're gonna be able to do there. But hopefully, we're still hoping that it will be fully electric. At the moment, phase one is nearing completion of the concept design, and we'll be looking to take the business case to Transport Scotland shortly. Uh, and hopefully, all going well and approved, we'll then move to tender, and hopefully have a contract award of a, a yard next year. We're still in the initiation phase for phase two, but that will get moving shortly as well. So daily zero emission operation of the vessels utilizing up to five megawatt hours of batteries with the chemistry to, still to be confirmed. The vessels will operate all day uh, utilizing the batteries and charge overnight when tied up in port using uh, some sort of automated or semi-automated charging device. The battery capacity has been sized to, to deal with the worst possible case on all the routes, which also means that they're very interchangeable, which is something we've been looking at doing for a while in standardization. However, what we do need to remember is that these are lifeline ferry services for the island communities. This is how a lot of the, the members of the public there get to school, get to work, get to doctor's appointments. So just in the event of any failure of the shoreside grid and we're unable to charge the batteries, we are also putting a diesel generator on board, which will be able to allow the vessel to maintain its standard operation. But again, we'll stress that is only during, um, during unexpected circumstances. And that generator will use low sulfur NGO once again. The propulsors for this are still to be decided. <coughs> Onto high seas free. So the project summary here, we were part of the European Union's Horizon 2020 framework, which was looking at lowering emissions in shipping. We had eight consortium members uh, on, the, on, on the consortium, with us Ballard being there looking after the fuel cell aspect, Kongsberg for the integration and the string test, uh, led by St Andrews University, and ourselves and LOC London Offshore Consultant, who've just merged with Aquilus Bremer, uh, looking at the vessel side of things. And for our work package, we were tasked with getting approval and principle for the vessel design. 
So in terms of daily operation, we were hoping to run the vessel with two 200 kilowatt marine approved fuel cells with two additional battery packs uh, with 700 kilowatt hours total. The vessels operate all day using these uh, and in a, compared with the SBRP project, the batteries here will provide that return to port facility if we do lose the hydrogen system. We're not obviously with new alternate technology, we're not quite sure how reliable it's going to be in the early stages. So we want to make sure that we have an additional way to have the vessel still operating in the event we do lose the hydrogen. The reason uh, well, we've selected the route for this vessel to be uh, up in Orkney between Kirklow and Shappensey. And the reason for that was because of the constrained wind energy that they have on the island. So that's electricity being generated by the wind turbines, which can't be connected back up to the main grid. So with that being said, the shore power there will hopefully all be coming from that constrained energy, uh, keeping the vessel lights, etc., on at night time. That will be used to charge the batteries and also to generate the hydrogen with the use of an electrolyzer on the island. We do have some other vessel projects ongoing. As I mentioned, the Glen Sanex and 802, these are dual fuel liquefied natural gas vessels. And as mentioned, we're hoping to save approximately 20% on emissions with these vessels as well. And running in parallel with that project is also the LNG shoreside infrastructure, putting a shoreside tank uh, at the port of Adrossen where these vessels will run to, uh, to buffer for the, the truck uh, to offload the hydrogen, uh, the, the liquefied natural gas into, and then onto the vessel. And just, uh, it's not quite to scale, but just to give you an idea, that LNG tank is 150 cubic meters, uh, same as the one on board the vessel. So it kind of gives you an idea of the amount of space this takes up. And this is a dual fuel vessel. So we also have to have the, the, marine, uh, the marine gas oil systems as well. The Northlink Roro vessel replacement, uh, again, in concept design phase. The initial design was to look at dual fuel again with LNG. We are now aware of some methanol engines, which might be in production later on this year, um, in the coming years as well. So we are going to look at as well if methanol might be an option for this route. But again, just still early stages with that. So watch the space there. Gert Dunn Kilcreggan, that again is in the concept design phase, looking to replace three passenger vessels. Uh, Gert to Dunn being one route and Gert to Kilcreggan the other route. And what we've seen on this route in particular is quite clearly the difference a timetable will make. Gert to Kilcreggan has a far more relaxed timetable, shorter operating day. It has more turnaround time, so a chance to charge batteries. So we're hoping the Kilcreggan vessel will be fully electric. The Gurk Dunn vessel, however, is operating 17, 18 hours of the day. It's got five minute turnaround times in port, so it's going to be much more difficult to fully electrify that route in particular, but we are still looking at ways if we can, if we can do that. So that vessel will be, again, diesel electric battery uh, and using tier three engines. They use shore power at nighttime as well to, to run uh, the hotel wood. And finally, the uh, new vessel from Alagoch Boystale. We are in the concept design phase with this, just starting in the last few weeks. This route is very constrained with the port infrastructure that we have to work with at Malig in particular, which is going to make it really difficult to optimize the whole form and potentially include different types of fuels, but that will all be investigated uh, in the next coming months. And it's not just vessels that we deal with at CML, we've also got a number of ports so when we're designing new port facilities, we account for the, the rising uh, sea levels associated with climate change. So I think it's about 0.6 of a meter, something around that, that we build up higher than previous. We've got more energy absorbing rock armoring to protect the marshalling areas. And we use locally sourced construction materials where possible. And some of the innovation that we've got within the new buildings, we're using biomass boilers, using locally sourced products from the islands, uh, solar panels, uh, and the buildings, uh, reed baths as well, uh, reed beds, uh, which helps to give a low cost zero energy wastewater treatment system. And finally, air source heating system at some of the terminals. If you'd like to know some more, we do have a lot of information on our website under the project pages. So please feel free to go and have a look there. And if you've got any questions as well, there's dedicated mailboxes set up for each of the projects. So again, please feel free to drop us an email and we'll do our best to get back to you as quickly as we can.